Welcome back, everybody. A little post-Christmas action for you. Yep. Uh, last week, we re released a video that was talking about the reasons why ultralight stuff is so annoyingly expensive. Yeah. Um, but this video, we're going to kind of take the flip side of that, and we're going to talk about um, high-quality items that you really just... You, you need to bite the bullet and spend a lot of money on. Yeah, and, and these items that we'll go through, I'm, I'm sure they're debatable by a lot of people, but this is just what we've found that uh, gets us the best bang for buck, like performance, com you know, comfortability, yeah. uh, all that fun stuff. And you know, there is kind of a, a buy once, cry once mentality. That's what we're talking about. And, and we're gonna stay away from talking about the big three items because yeah. I think it's kind of a given that you can spend a lot of money on them and get a lot of value out of that. Yes. So we're gonna talk about items that you should consider spending more on. Um, they might not be very expensive items, but they're items that I think can make or break your trip. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> before we launch into it though, I do wanna take a moment and say, if you are new to backpacking and you're starting to get into it, um, we do have a couple videos on cheap gear or how to get outfitted at the REI garage sale. I can't. I can't say that enough that if you're just getting into backpacking, you should consider going to one of those garage sales if you can and yep. buying as much stuff there because it's super cheap. And if you're just getting into it, that's a good that's a good way to do it. But we're not here to talk about buying cheap stuff at the REI garage sale. We're here to talk about stuff you should spend money on. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I think the first thing we'll kind of talk about and I think, I think you could technically consider it part of the big three, but we're gonna talk about under insulation. So insulation that goes under you. So if you're in a hammock, that's an underquilt. Or a sleeping pad. Or a sleeping pad, and if you're in a tent, that's a sleeping pad. So, um, I don't know, in a hammock, most people don't realize that you lose the vast majority of your heat beneath you because you have all that open air. And likewise, when you're sleeping on the ground, uh, and if it's cold outside, you're gonna lose a lot of your heat to the ground. So that, is that the uh, law of thermodynamics? I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if something's colder and you're warmer, heat's gonna go from cold to war or from warm to cold. Um, so I, that's just something we've all in, in hammocking. They call it CBS, cold butt syndrome. <laughs> they actually do. Um, and I've experienced it uh, sleeping on the ground once. Now I I bit the bullet and bought a Thermarest Neo Air X-Therm, which is an insulated pad, and it made a huge difference. So under insulation, I think is something worth spending money on. Yeah, you can go to, you can go to like, you know, Walmart and get foam pads and all that stuff. And you know, it'll probably do the job. If you're okay. starting out, that's yeah. not, a, might not be a bad thing to invest in. Yeah, but I think, I think everybody would agree that Doing things to keep you warm at night and give you high quality sleep, very important. So uh, that's the only big three item we're gonna talk about. Um, the rest is uh, is something I think is really important. It's certainly something that I think is triply as important for running, but you kinda wanna spend money on a good pair of hiking shoes. Yep, shoes, boots, whatever whatever it is you wear, you, you're gonna wanna buy high quality shoes or boots and you're going to want to try them on yes yeah, make wear sure them you get a little them, bit make sure you get them sized correctly um shoe, shoes and boots are so individual and personalized yeah. that and so for example what works for me doesn't work for kevin we run in different shoes mm -hmm. we hike in different shoes sometimes um so and and that's been an evolution yeah. but uh Make sure that you're investing in high quality footwear that works for you. And if that means you have to go to a running store and get sized or go to a, you know, a nice outdoor store yeah. and get sized and try them on. It's what we do for running. Yeah. And if that means also that you need to spend a little bit more money on shoes, your feet will thank you in the long run. And there's nothing worse than having crappy shoes. Yeah, that'll, I think. Or shoes that don't fit you, yeah, right? Yeah, ru running and hiking, there's nothing that'll end your trip or experience more than if your feet go. Yeah. If your feet go, trip's over. Um, so in line with hiking shoes, we also kind of uh, recommend buy a nice high quality pair of hiking socks. Yep, yep. You know, we always talk about, we use darn tufts. Those, uh, those have, 
for us have been proven the yeah, most they're reliable. They're not cheap for socks. I mean, they're like 20 bucks a pair. Yeah. And you can go to Dick's or something or Amazon buy socks for like one or two bucks a pair, but invest in high quality socks. Yep. You take care of your feet. If you take care of your feet, you're gonna have a much nicer and more comfortable hike. And um, you know, you're not gonna be battling blisters yeah. as much. And you know, darn tufts work for us, but there's so many great pairs of socks out there. Um, you know, we're not super big fans of smart wool, but no. they are super comfortable. They're comfortable, they just, they just don't have the durability that yeah. we need. And Kevin and I both use in GGs every once in a while as well, but um, I think darn tufts have been proven the most consistent and they're not cheap. Um, no. But we're not willing to sacrifice on shoes or socks. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. this He's going away. So working further north from the feet. Um, <laughs> and this is another thing we've learned from running. Um, invest in high quality, either hiking shorts or hiking underwear. Invest in not chafing. Yes. <laughs> um, it is worth every cent. Uh, I, now, it's totally different for some people. Some people can wear a pair of shorts and it won't chafe, and, but another person will wear the same pair of shorts and it'll chafe them. Everybody, Everybody's body is different, so I don't know what to tell you. You know, we have ex officio underwear. We started with that, but now uh, I, I hate that stuff. You like I, it, it was fine, but uh, we recently pulled the trigger on a Patagonia trail running shorts that have a built in compression short, which is kind of what we prefer full length compression, full length compression short. Uh, and that has been an incredible short. I mean, we both wore them all seven days of the Colorado trail. No chafing whatsoever. Didn't have to use any Vaseline. Nothing like that. And that's the only time I've ever done seven days and not had to worry about any chafing whatsoever. And those shorts are super expensive. Yeah, yeah. The I it's so personalized. I, I mean, it's I've, hard. It's I, hard to, to give recommendations. I, I've, on it. I've worn Under Armour uh, compression shorts and they were fine. But every once in a while, after a few days in, you'd start to chafe. But the Patagonia Nine Trails shorts with the the full length built in compression yeah. short. They breathe really well, yeah. and so zippered pockets zipper, too. Zippered pockets as well. It's not really a trail running short. It's more it's of a it's, hiking. It's like a it's hiking, a hiking short. short, but they call it a trail running short. Yeah, it's a uh, you know two zippered pockets, which is great. Um, lightweight fabric and lightweight breathable compression shorts on the inside, full length for us. Those have been the best so far on battling chafing yeah. if you get a lot of chafing. A final piece of um, clothing we'll talk about in terms of what you want to spend your money on. This is kind of an obvious one. You want a high quality down jacket. Um, that's the, other than the underquilt, that's the only insulation we're going to say. It might be a good idea to spend a decent amount of money on that. Now, having said that, Costco sells like a $30 down jacket. Yeah, that's there's pretty legit. Yeah, there's definitely some cheap down out there yeah um it's you know it's heavier and that's fine but i think for if you're serious about winter camping and if you're serious about staying warm you gotta invest in a high quality yeah. down jacket and i personally don't have a heavyweight high quality down jacket and i suffer for it yeah also down jackets are one of the few items you can find deals on online especially in the off season so that kind of wraps up all the clothing and insulation related items you know we're not talking about the big three but there are still some some, some equipment items you can spend some money on that we think you should spend some money on that will impact your trip very positively First one everybody knows is our Helinox Chair Zero. No, we're not saying you need to get a Helinox Chair Zero, but we uh, are. Well, maybe we are saying you should need to get a Helinox Chair Zero. You but, know, you know, I'm gonna have to deal with all these comments about this. <laughs> so, invest in your comfort when you're not hiking. <laughs> all right. Okay. If you're gonna go the chair route, if you're gonna go the chair route. Yeah, we should preface it. If you're gonna go the chair route, just get a light high quality, comfortable chair, and it's gonna be expensive. Yep, and the, so far the the Helinox Chair Zero is the best one that we've seen out there for how small and light it is. And, and fun fact, is. they were, they're on sale right now for almost 50% off. Wow. People are buying them up. Wow. Yeah, so if you're into chairs, 
you know, we know that there are tons of people that are not into chairs and that's completely fine. But if you're in the chairs, get the lightest, invest. most packable yeah. one, invest in it. Invest in it. It is worth it. Because if you do carry a chair, you will use it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you will. So it's worth having a nice one. Yeah. But uh, we're like chair whores, so everybody kind of expects that from us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flame on about the chairs, I get it. Um, the last item we're gonna talk about, um, this is one I, I do think can make or break your trip. Not a lot of people talk about and this. Not a lot of people talk about this, and we'll throw props to Frozen for telling us about these, but invest, if you use a squeeze style water filter system, which most people do, invest in a good, high quality, dirty water bag. Yep. The Sawyer bags don't, they don't cut it. They don't cut it. Um, they'll work for a couple trips, that's fine, but they'll start to tear on the seams and they're just not high quality. We have been using, I guess mine's lasted, yours hasn't. Yeah, I broke mine. Andy broke his. I've been using an ever new um, dirty water bag, a liter and a half, I think is no, what it is. No, two. Two liters, two liters. Uh, I've been using it for almost two years now. Heavy use, still works fine. Yeah. No rips, no tears. I busted, no my, I busted mine in Colorado actually on the last day um, because my water filter was so backed up and I wasn't back like flushing. So much. And yeah. I wasn't back flushing my water filter enough and I should have been. And uh, I put a lot of pressure on my water bag and popped it. it. popped it. But the best thing is, is immediately when, when we got to town, I just went on Amazon and ordered another one. <laughs> yeah, and they're not that expensive. I mean, like 10 to $20 for one. Um, so it's not like an expensive piece of gear, but, but something you should spend money on. Yeah, and you know what? Get the two liter as well, to yeah. be honest. It, we really like having the two liter dirty water capacity because we're carrying like a liter to a liter and a half on yeah. us, depending on where we are. And then when you get to camp, it's nice to have nice. two an extra two liters yeah. of dirty water, or if you've got a long water carry, you can have a high quality water bag. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for us talking about these uh, items. You know, you don't have to spend a lot of money on backpacking gear, but if you're looking to strategically invest and kind of invest in comfort and how comfortable you are out there, these are the items we think you should yeah. take a crack at, at. At least get the shoes dialed in. Yeah. <laughs> at least get the yeah. shoes dialed in. Yeah. Um, that, that, out of all the items we listed, I think that's probably, that ins insulation is probably the most important things. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching and we will see everybody on the next one.